Hi friends, Vinay Kumar here, International NLP and IAS coach. Welcome you all back to the series of videos that uh, I am making for you to simplify Indian economy for you for your civil service exam success. Okay, so in this uh, video my dear friends, I am going to uh, explain to you one important uh, topic of Indian economy which is very much in news making it an anticipated question in the prelims, maybe in the mains and definitely in the interview my dear friends. All right, prelims the possibility is high, mains possibility is there and interview possibility is I mean very very high my dear friends, fair enough and that concept is helicopter money. What is this helicopter money? Let's first define it my dear friends. Uh, let's define helicopter money like this, helicopter money is direct unrepayable funding by central bank of additional fiscal transfers as deemed necessary. Did you get that my dear friends? I repeat it for you. Please do understand. Direct unrepayable fund, you know funding by the central bank uh, of additional fiscal transfers as deemed necessary. I know guys, it is sounding like oh my god, what's this definition all about, correct? I will make clear case of this definition, I will break this definition, you know I will break down this definition for you and make it very very simple in, in just about 5 to 7 minutes from now. But for that we need to understand the background, the context of how we arrive at the helicopter money in this next 5 to 7 minutes. Are you ready for it my dear friends? Superb. Okay, let's uh, you know try to understand what necessitates the, the bringing in of the helicopter money. Okay, now look at here my dear friends, as you all uh, are experiencing right now in Indian economy and economies almost across the globe, there is a low growth tendency, the economic growth has uh, come down in almost all countries of the world, fair enough. And this economic growth coming down maybe for uh, maybe for different reasons in the pre-corona period but in the in the corona period, in this pandemic period, in this uh, crisis period, the corona has been one very important factor in bringing down the growth. And this bringing down of growth has happened because of the forced inactivity. Governments across the globe in attempt, in their attempt to uh, what do you call normalize the health situation, in, in their attempt to uh, you know respond to this health crisis have come up with these unconventional uh, health measures like uh, uh, lockdown, seal down, containment and all these things my dear friends. And this uh, invariably has led to forced inactivity in the economy leading to decreased output and of course decreased growth. Are you connecting to what I am trying to tell you my dear friends? So far are we on the same page? Okay. Why there is less economic growth now? Primarily because of corona we know now. Yeah. Having said this, now whenever there is uh, no or low economic growth. Hmm, uh, uh, how do we how do we revive it because growth is so very important for an economy it is essential for economy my dear friends see a growth in itself may not be everything to economy but it is an essential precondition for everything else in the economy yes or no my dear friends so we cannot stay without growth or with low growth for a very long time growth needs to keep happening now when the growth is low or when the conditions are deflationary, deflationary. Remember my dear friends, what you learnt in the, in the beginning of the Indian economy that you learnt, uh, there is this Keynesian economics which suggests to you that whenever there is uh, low growth or and, and no one is ready to uh, take initiative to revive the growth or to bring the growth back to the positive uh, territory. It is, it is the government which has to take the responsibility 
to ensure growth is brought to the positive spiral again. Growth is, uh, you know, again there alive and kicking. Got that in I'm trying to. And how does uh, Keynes uh, recommend to the, um, what does the Keynes, what, what does Keynes recommend to the governments to, to come up as measures to, to stimulate the economy, which, which most governments today call as fiscal stimulus measures or, or they also come up with a package calling it as fiscal stimulus package. Primarily there are two fiscal stimulus measures that governments resort to as a part of their Keynesian intervention. One, massively spend on infrastructure, massively. Spend so much on infrastructure so that it will have a lot of forward, backward linkages to the economy and the whole economy is put back to shape again. Perfect, my dear friends, that's one. Two, uh, go for uh, indirect uh, tax cuts. First, indirect tax cuts, like, like the tax on production, the tax on services. Today, fortunately, we have just one tax replacing this array of taxes. So, uh, bring down the GST to make it very simple for you, my dear friends. Are you connecting to what I'm trying to tell you? Absolutely, my dear friends. Hmm? Now, so what happens when you go for such a measure where you massively spend on infrastructure, you bring down the indirect uh, taxes, you are benefiting the firms. Very good. Okay, because if you had not done that, then firms only had two options with them. One, lay off the employees to, to remain profitable. Perfect. And laying off employees is not a good thing because unemployment is another major problem in an economy. Yes. Or two, uh, you know, firms should have borrowed more and more from the banks which the banks should have become weary of lending after a certain point for the risk of default and there would have been again the deflationary spiral. So even when you want loans, banks are not ready to lend to you. So a very, very difficult crisis-like situation we would have experienced or we will experience if the government of the day will not take the responsibility to, to bring the growth back into shape, my dear friends. Perfect. Connecting to what I'm trying to tell you, superb, my dear friends. <coughs> so, <coughs> what happens? Um, all right. So, governments, uh, when they when they take these measures of spending on infra, on you know of uh, bringing down the uh, indirect taxes, all right, they are definitely benefiting the firms. Okay, they are definitely helping the financial institutions and all that. Okay, and, and the government expects the private sector firms to, to now start taking actions, now that its share of actions has been taken and, uh, you know, a pedestal or, or a foundation has been created for the further growth. But then what happens? Remind you again, this is a phase of forced inactivity <laughs> whatever you are massively spending on infrastructure if you are not allowing people to come out and do what they have to do to bring the economy back to shape how do you expect the economy to grow so what do you do with all your roads and uh, dams and you know other forms of infrastructure that you are building if no one is there to actually use it or no one is there to uh, what do you call, make sense of it and make sense of it to the economy in large. Are you connecting to what I am trying to tell you? Yes, maybe you will, uh, infrastructure, you, you know, the building the infrastructure, uh, building the optical uh, fiber networks or uh, uh, what do you call, you spend a lot on this power infrastructure because as you know, in India, many places, uh, people have smartphones and people have computers but uh, there is power outages almost for more than three-fourths of the day. So if you don't have power, it's like you have a mobile phone but you cannot charge it. And this mobile phone is a smartphone but you cannot benefit out of it because uh, uh, most of the time it's either battery low or no battery. Are you connecting to what I'm trying to tell you my dear friend? So government may actually spend here but then 
what is the extent of population that govern you know what is the extent of population that can benefit out of this kind of infrastructure spending all this power infrastructure this uh, uh, internet infrastructure and all that see take the case of india we are still a developing economy complex economy it's not all about knowledge economy or internet economy yet correct we need our uh, lorries to uh, travel north to south east to west and and do all this exchange of goods and only then you can see actually economy reviving back perfect superb my dear friends so is no no what does that mean is is keens working or does the keens intervention work here is a question now if the keens uh, has to work then then what the government has to do it has to massively borrow to massively spend on infra if you are you know number one you are massively spending on infra number two you are bringing down the uh, tax rates which only means for for you to sustain you need to borrow a lot and when you borrow a lot you are again adding to yourself the risk of mounting fiscal deficit disproportionately high debt to gdp ratio public debt to gdp ratio which is again not good which is not again fiscally prudent fiscally sustainable we are threatening you know we are threatening the intergenerational equity which we have agreed to you know which we have agreed to not threaten in our frbm fiscal responsibility and budgetary management yes sir sure no my dear friends i mean are you making sense of this intergenerational equity is today generation massively uh, borrowing to recklessly spend may result in future generations having to uh, you know repay all this debt i mean whatever the future generations produces may not be used for uh, their benefit rather to repay the debts or to service the debts that is made today you know for for the comfort of this generation are you connecting to what i'm trying so we cannot uh, you know we, we cannot have fiscal deficit over and above a point that too in a period of forced inactivity see if, if whatever you're spending as part of your keynesian intervention is going to give you dividends very good go and spend but here is a special case where there is inactivity even after you spend now is this the time to actually go and spend left right center are you connecting to what i'm trying to tell you my dear friends all of you perfect superb so uh there is a question mark over uh, uh, the utility the application of keynesian economics during a time like this correct what else can we do can we uh, you know can we transfer a uh, lot of income in the form of that ubi and all that uh, to 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 the households so, because again again look at here guys now when your debts are mounting government what you would generally do to to somehow ameliorate to somehow moderate this fiscal deficit you would increase the tax rates on the direct tax front on, on the household incomes on the personal incomes on the corporate incomes you you will you will have to ha you know charge a higher tax which is again not good perfect when people are in homes they are not going out to earn and whatever little they have they will have to pay as tax another crisis is yes or no perfect connecting to what i'm trying to tell you so what can you do now will you just transfer uh, money to the households will you just transfer money to especially in a country like india when, where we faced uh, uh, so many problems like this unorganized sector workers crisis and all that will you just keep uh, putting money good but how is it in the form of again uh, taking debt you know is it in the form of again uh, increasing that public debt to gdp ratio fiscal sustainability is in question are you connecting to what i am trying to tell you my dear friends look at there so whatever government has to do its debt is uh, increasing especially in relation to the gdp you know which is like one of the key parameter for our fiscal responsibility and how we manage our finances okay so 
whatever good thing government is trying to do, the uh, you know debt of the government is increased is not good thing. So can we go for quantitative easing, where uh, uh, the central bank flush, you know, central bank pumps in a lot of money into the economy, like it happened during that subprime uh, mortgage crisis in America, where the the Fed, the Federal Reserve of uh, U.S. was buying all the toxic assets to to pump economy with a lot of money like that can central bank pump in a lot of money by uh, absorbing uh, the the government debts but again understand the government debt is still there for now there is a respite to government because central bank is taking the responsibility for now but the debt liability of the government is still there. Are you connecting to what I am trying to tell you, my dear friends? So, whichever way you are trying to revive the growth in the economy, the debt of the government is increasing, which is not good, which is not, you know, which is not sustainable in the long run. So, this is a situation that that mandates an extraordinary approach, an unconventional approach, and that approach is, my dear friends, what we call as uh, an intervention like this, helicopter money. Okay, helicopter money. Now I think this definition makes clear sense to you. L let's go back to the definition. Direct, which means what? Central bank is directly giving this money to the government to the government. How is it directly giving the money to the government? Probably by printing the currency. Okay. It's printing the currency, giving it to the government. Look at the second word. Unrepayable. Oh, la. Government doesn't have to repay this back. Alright. Direct unrepayable funding by the central bank of additional fiscal transfers as deemed necessary the what is this additional uh, fiscal transfers government will have to do this fiscal transfers to the firms so that uh, they don't lay off the employees to the households so that you know they are able to uh, live during the time of crisis with, without having to burn their pockets on all, all these things my dear friends are you connecting now look at look at make sense of make sense of the words my dear friends it's very very important we are talking about fiscal transfers what is this fiscal transfers government is giving money to firms government is giving money to households which it will not get back it is giving it as an extraordinary measure to see everyone is taken care of during this uh, crisis like conditions perfect now to give this money to households to firms where is it getting its money from central bank how by printing the currency so you know very well other times when the when the central bank prints the currency to give to the government there is a debt liability on the government government will have to repay this money but in the case of helicopter money, government need not repay. That's the beauty of helicopter money. This is a special case of financial intervention. It's called money-driven financial intervention. Very powerful. Okay? Because here, you're, you're, this, this free money is what is trying to help the economy come back to its shape. Are you connecting to what I'm trying to tell you, my dear friends? Perfect. Hmm? This is helicopter money. If you want to make clear, you know, if you want to have clarity on what is this helicopter money, I want you to imagine this. Wherever you are sitting, I want you to imagine this, my dear friends. Look up. Look up, look up. Yeah? Okay. Unless until you have a roof above your head, imagine there is an helicopter. And from this helicopter, a lot of money is being thrown. How much ever you want, you can take. No, it's not the case with actually. But can you can you imagine this analogy, my dear friends? 
there is helicopter which is you know giving giving money now the one who is one who is giving this money from the helicopter the one who is giving it off doesn't know like doesn't want this money back he just wants some crisis to be tackled and who is this person sitting in the helicopter and giving this money in our case government are you connecting to what i am trying to tell you my dear friends and where is this government getting this money from central bank and should the government repay this money to central bank no are you understanding my dear friends fair enough now most of you will be thinking oh sir what is this how can just like that money be created and money be given to people i mean how is it all possible this is all possible my dear friends in times of crisis like this got that now i'm trying to many economists i know still call this a taboo they call this helicopter money kind of things as a taboo they 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 are strictly against it they you know they cry foul over uh, factors like uh, they say uh, it has a inflationary bias it will lead to very high level of inflation they'll say the currency value will come down obviously there will be inflation if it is not utilized well there will be dip in the currency value but then there is a basic need of survival right now how do you explain this yeah something if something like helicopter money is not coming how do we survive is the question these economists also argue that uh, the independence of central bank is eroded government is telling central bank what it has to do boss i have a question for you tell me where in the world does central bank in real sense have independence it's only there in the paper i see i mean something that every one of us know of course central banks do work independently but there is always an element of you know, this thing is always been there now who is asking you to uh, what do you call who is asking you to take away the independence of central bank let's look at it this way central bank in this case instead of being a mute spectator to the crisis in economy is taking a proactive stance and by itself it is giving money to government to give it to people and it is telling government don't pay me back are you connecting to what i'm trying to tell you my dear friends this is helicopter money fair enough are you did you understand it absolutely my dear friends superb <clears throat> so i hope uh, you have understood helicopter money to the extent of answering any question in prelims mains and interview my dear friends i know there are uh, uh, what do you call guys uh, so many so many doubts uh, that will be there for you when when you read the uh, indian economy yeah in indian economy you get to uh, there are many simple concepts like this unless until it is simplified by someone it remains complex for you so my request to all of you is my dear friend just like the way in one of my previous video i simplified operation twist to you just like the way in this video i simplified helicopter money to you i you know have this uh, mission of simplifying indian economy to civil service exam aspirants so whatever you find as uh, slightly difficult or complicated my dear friends my request to you is please use the comment section below and you can list some of these concepts yeah as in when uh, i am i am trying to uh, get into this thing of simplifying the economy for you i'll pick one by one and i will do it for you my dear friends fair enough thank you all so much for watching this video see you all in my next video thank you so much my dear friends